The next piece of control in the schedule and category is availability. Availability is a much broader topic. You should just understand some of the basics now. Availability is the process of checking if the goods are available to be delivered. That part should be pretty easy to understand, right? Now, why would anyone check this off? This availability flag. Simple. In cases like CS, third party, availability is not relevant. We know that we don't have that material, so there's no point in doing an availability check. This is just one example of a scenario where availability check is turned off. Other examples are service. We don't do availability check for service. Example is a warranty product or even a service product. There's no point in doing availability on service products. We'll see one more example when we talk about an example at the very end of this section. But we don't need to understand anything more about availability at this point. All you need to understand here is that availability check can be turned on or off at the schedule line category level. The next piece of configuration is this guy here, requirement slash assembly. Don't worry about assembly. Let's just look at requirement. What is a requirement? The word requirement here is a shortcut for a much bigger term. T-O-R. It stands for Transfer of Requirements. What is the requirement? Why is it transferred? Where is it transferred to? To understand this, we have to understand some of the basics of MRP. MRP is a very big concept. MM consultant studied. So we are not worried too much about MRP. But to get a full picture, we have to understand a little bit about MRP. MRP stands for Material, Requirement, planning. What materials need to be prepared? How much of the material needs to be prepared? Why it needs to be prepared? These are the questions that MRP works with. Why does any company prepare or manufacture materials? Because there is a demand for it. The word demand can also be called as a requirement. So these requirements need to be documented. Where does the requirement for a material come from? Sales. Some customer is asking for a particular material via a particular sales order. So as soon as a sales order is saved, the requirement get transferred to MRP. That's one input. Another input for MRP is historic sales. Inputs from historic sales also go to MRP. For example, let's say Apple is launching iPhone 5. When they're launching iPhone 5, how many of those should be manufactured per month? They should have some kind of an estimate, right? They just can't manufacture 10 million iPhones at the same time. They cannot afford to manufacture just a thousand of them. So how do they get to that reasonable number that they should manufacture? Simple, they get it from history. Historic sales. Okay, so iPhone 4S, how many did we manufacture for the launch? We manufactured, say, 3 million. So add 
buffer to it, say 25%. Maybe manufacture 3.5 million or 4 million for the launch. But going forward, on a day-to-day -day basis, how many should be manufactured per month? Maybe not 4 million, maybe 1 million a month. But we cannot just keep manufacturing 1 million a month, right? We have to also consider the current demand. And that input comes from the current sales. Say in the last month, there was a total of 0.75 million in sales. Then are we right in manufacturing a million per month? Let's see for one more month. So the next month there is only 0.65 million. Whoa, something is wrong. Maybe we need to cut down on the production. Go back to 0.9 million probably. The next month the sales rose to 0.9 million. Maybe it's a holiday season. The point being, the MRP process has to consider inputs from a variety of different sources to really understand how much can be manufactured or even procured. The key inputs being historic sales and current sales. Now that's about the inputs. What about the outputs? What are the outputs of MRP? Mainly two outputs. Purchase requisition and planned orders. It can't generate purchase orders. It can only generate purchase requisitions. PREX or purchase requisitions are precursor to purchase order. They have to be manually or automatically converted to purchase order. Who does that? Typically somebody from the purchasing department. Once a purchase order is ready, it will be sent to the vendor. And the vendor will procure the material for us. Now, what's a planned order? A planned order similar to a purchase requisition is a precursor to production order. What is a production order? A production order is an instruction to the shop floor to manufacture goods. If we are Honda, the car manufacturer, and if we have a planned order, it means we plan to manufacture uh, say a Honda Accord with these particular specifications and that will be converted to a production order by somebody in the production department um, who understands their system well. So, so overall you understand the inputs to the MRP and you also understand the outputs to MRP. Now what is a transfer of requirement? Every sales order transfers requirements to MRP. The user who created the order would not know anything about it. As soon as the sales order is saved, a requirement will be transferred to MRP. If you want to really see the requirement that's transferred, I'll give you an example. Let's take a standard order some quantity say M01, say 27. Save it and the order number is 13404. Now go to the transaction MD04 that's where you can see the requirements that have been transferred to MRP. Now remember, these requirements have just been transferred to MRP. MRP has not yet taken any action on it. Just a raw list of requirements. When the MRP process runs, 
It look at all the requirements, analyze them, summarize them, compare with historic requirements. Basically, do a whole bunch of logic. We're not bothered about that. But just remember that the list of sales requirements that we have transferred to MRP can be seen in MD04. Here you can see which element has triggered each of these rows. Is it a delivery? Is it a purchase order? And how much did each element transfer? If you keep scrolling down, here is your order. 13404, line item 10, has triggered a quantity of 27. That's why I entered an easy to remember number, 27, instead of 1 or a 10. So we can easily track it here. Now the MRP process knows that there is an order for M01 for a quantity of 27. And what action MRP takes, we don't care. Our duty as an SD consultant is to ensure that the sales requirements are transferred to MRP. This happens behind the scenes without the intervention of the user. Because we have turned on the requirements flag here in the schedule line category, just turning it on is enough to transfer the requirement to MRP. There are other pieces of configuration that control how it should be transferred. You know, if they should be transferred individually or collectively, so on and so forth. We're not worried about it at this point. So for now, just understand four things. What is a requirement? Why requirements need to be transferred to MRP? How requirements are transferred to MRP? How to view the requirements transferred to MRP? That's it.